Having the right visibility into your endpoints is extremely important because without proper visibility, it makes it difficult for us analysts to determine what had occurred on an endpoint when we're investigating a potential compromise. Now, the good news here for Windows endpoints is that logging is automatically enabled by default. However, the bad news is that the default log settings is just simply not enough as it does not track important events such as process creations. We could either configure the auditing settings to enable these events, or we can install a tool called Sysmon on our endpoints to help monitor for events that can be extremely helpful during an investigation. Welcome to day eight of the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll learn more about what Sysmon is and what this tool has to offer. So what exactly is Sysmon? Sysmon is a free Microsoft tool that is part of the Sys internal suite, and it provides you with a lot of telemetry which will increase the chances of you catching evil. Sysmon has the capability to monitor a bunch of events, such as process creations, network connections, file creations, and many more. It is quite customizable as all you really need is a configuration file, which is optional, but I do recommend it so you can control what events should be logged. As of recording, the latest version of Sysmon is version 15.15, .15, and this version has a total of 30 different event IDs to choose from. Looking at the website, let's go over Sysmon's capabilities. Once installed, Sysmon has the capability to log process creations along with their command line for both parent and current processes, which is incredibly helpful when looking for evil. It also records the hashes for processes so you can use OSINT, open source intelligence, to obtain additional context by looking up the file hash. One important field that Sysmon brings to the table is the process GUID, which can be used to correlate events and is something that I use quite often to really understand the bigger picture. If you have Sysmon installed, I would highly recommend that you correlate events using the process GUID. The last one that I wanna note here is that Sysmon can also capture network connections which will include both the source and destination IPs along with their ports and process that was involved in making the connection. Now, imagine that a C2 command and control process was seen successfully establishing an outbound connection towards an external IP using a non-standard port. You could then see what process was responsible for making that connection and then correlate the events using the process GUID. Seriously, Sysmon is incredible. But do note that logging the network connections are actually disabled by default and must be enabled via the configuration file. As mentioned earlier, there are 30 different types of event IDs that Sysmon version 15.15 .15 has to offer. And I'll go through some of them that can be quite important to keep in mind when you're involved in an investigation. Starting off with event ID number one, which is process creation. This event ID will track any new processes along with its command line on an endpoint. So if an attacker were to execute the malware, well, you'll see Sysmon event ID one being generated, which will track the activity. The beauty of this event ID is that it also tracks the file hash as well, which again, you can perform OSINT to obtain additional context. The next one is event ID number three, network connections. As I mentioned earlier, this event ID is disabled by default and must be enabled via the configuration file. However, once enabled, it can track network connections that stemmed from a process, which can be super helpful as it tracks both source and destination IPs along with their ports. So if I happen to stumble across a odd binary running under the temporary directory while looking for event ID one, I could then search the process GUID and if the odd binary established a network connection, I would see that activity under event ID 3, if it was enabled. It's super powerful and I would highly recommend enabling this if you aren't capturing network related activity. Event IDs 6, 7, and 8, driver slash image load and create remote thread. These event IDs could identify potential defense evasion techniques such as process injection where an attacker could inject their code into a separate process to help achieve their objective. This is a common technique used in the wild to bypass some antivirus and EDRs, endpoint detection and response. If you plan on searching for these event IDs, do note that it can be quite noisy and a lot of false positives are going to show up. 
But again, this is where looking at the process GUID of an interesting event could help you see the bigger picture. Note that event ID 7, which is image load, is disabled by default. Next is event ID 10, process access. This is a common event ID when looking for potential credential access towards the LSAS process, which is local security authority subsystem service. Attackers love to tamper with this process and attempt to read its memory because it can contain credentials, which could then be used to move laterally within the environment. The last one I'll mention is event ID 22, which is DNS query. You can find a lot of interesting activity by looking at what domain an endpoint is trying to request. In my experience while threat hunting, I was able to identify a compromised endpoint by simply searching for this event ID. The event was seen querying for a DGA domain, domain generated algorithm. And after looking at the chain of events by using the process GUID, I immediately knew that the endpoint was compromised. Now, I don't want to make this video too, too long, so I'll stop here. And there are so many other great event IDs that Sysmon provides. I would highly encourage you to spend a bit of time to go over them and learn what they can provide. I'll leave a link down below for you to take a look. And that concludes day eight of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge. In the next video, I'll show you how to install Sysmon using a popular configuration so you can begin looking at Sysmon logs to level up your analysis skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.